In today's attention economy, video editing is definitely one of the most sought after and valuable skill sets that you could learn. This is the same skill set that allowed me to start out as a freelance video editor over five years ago and generate seven figures online by the age of 21. So my goal with this video is to hopefully help you get started on this journey of learning how to do video editing and create better content. And the software that we'll be using today is called DaVinci Resolve. Now, the cool thing is this software, you can actually get started with for completely free and access most of the features that you will ever need in fact in this video we'll only use the free version they have a paid version as well but you know for starting out you don't even necessarily need that so make sure you watch until the end and without any further ado let's jump right into the tutorial so when you first open up DaVinci Resolve this is what you are going to see and the first step is to create a new project for your video so what you want to do is click here on new project and then you can name it to whatever you want I'm going to name this one Dubai and then I'm going to click on create as you can see I have my entire DaVinci Resolve interface now pulled up and we are ready to get to editing but before we would do that, I want to thank Envato for sponsoring this video and you for watching it. For content creators and video editors like you and me, Envato is an absolute goldmine. It has all sort of assets that you would need to take your videos to the next level and make your projects way better in one place. Envato offers unlimited downloads of millions of assets online from stock videos, to royalty free music, sound effects, and even things like title animation templates for DaVinci Resolve or even transitions, right? Now these things can really speed up your workflow and just take everything to the next level and make it way more professional without you needing to spend tens of hours learning how to do all these little animations and so on. Now, not only that, but they also have things like images, fonts, and so many more things. Now, the cool thing is that you can download whatever you want as many times as you want if you just get a subscription there. So you don't have to license every single song or every single stock video or asset individually, which could cost you tens of thousands of dollars if you are to do that. All you need to do is just get one subscription. Oh, and the best part is you can use all these assets for both your personal and your commercial projects as well. Throughout this video, all of the stock footage, music, and everything else as well that I'm going to be using are from Envato. So if you want to follow along, make sure to click the first link in the description below and take advantage of this amazing offer right now. You can get huge discounts both on the monthly and annual plans as well. Now let's get into the tutorial. Now the first thing you want to do once you created your new project is to set the correct resolution for it. So all you have to do is come here to this little settings icon and then here you will be able to set all the different settings that you want. Now only things I'm going to uh, keep right now are 1080p HD because I want to use just a regular full HD uh, video and you can also set the frame rate here so you can use 24 30 60 fps whatever you prefer right i'm going to go with 23.976 and then another thing that you might want to change is here the proxy media format you might want to change this from prores to h264 to avoid having just absolutely huge file sizes if you wish to use proxies now i'm going to now click on save and get started with the actual editing. Now, the first thing I would recommend you to do when it comes to importing footage into your software is to stay organized even outside of DaVinci, right? So when you have a new video that you are working on, try to organize your different kinds of footage into different folders so that it will be easy to find exactly what you are looking for, okay? Now, as you can see, I have two folders in here. One of them is for B-roll, which are the clips that I actually want to use in the edit. And the second one is for music and sound effects. Now, what I'm going to do next is import them into my software so as you can see here on the bottom we have a bunch of these different tabs which I will be going into deeper into in a second but first I'm just going to come here to the media pool and then now I can select all the clips that I want to use in my edit and drag and drop them right here now it's prompting me if I want to change the project's frame rate because some of these clips have a different frame rate. I'm personally not going to change that, but if you only have one frame rate for all your clips, then you will probably want to change it so that the timeline settings match it as well. Now, next up, I'm also going to be importing the music and sound effects. So same thing, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop them right here. And you can see now I have these actual clips that I want to be using in my edit uh, within the software. So. I'm going to now actually walk you through the interface really quickly so that you can get a better feel for it because I know that at first all of this stuff in here can feel a bit overwhelming. 
So this here is the media panel. If you want to be importing a bunch of clips and working with them, organizing them, you can do it the easiest here. Then we have the cut section. So the cut part is great for just doing simple edits, just basically cutting out parts, you know, just making your rough edit. Then we have the actual edit part, which is the one that you are going to be using the most probably. This is where you would do like your entire edit for the for the most part. Then we have the fusion tab. Now with the fusion tab, you can create some really cool animations and things of that nature. This is more of an advanced feature. So we are not going to go too deep into it in just this video. Now, after that, we have the color tab. So this is where you will be doing all your color grading and color correcting. Then we have the fair light tab, which will uh, allow you to do some really advanced audio editing if you want. And then we have the deliver tab, which is where you would export your project. So let's go now into the edit tab, because this is where we'll be putting together our actual video. So the way this edit tab is structured is you basically have your timeline in here, and then we have uh, the actual clips right here. So if I want to add this to my timeline, I'm just going to drag and drop it in here. And you can see now I actually have it imported into my video. Now the way it's set up currently is that I have two um, basically preview panels in here. One of them is here to preview any clips that I'm looking to import onto the actual timeline. And one of them is the actual timeline. Now, if you want to change this up, you can easily do that. All you have to do is click here on this button and then it will make it a single one, which I do personally prefer. I don't like seeing both of them at the same time. And you can also move things around, move the panels around just like this. So you can actually, you know, customize it to your exact preference. Now here on the top right, you actually have some pretty important parts. So first one, we have the mixer in here, which will come in handy for uh, monitoring audio levels, for example. Then we have the metadata. So this one will tell you more information about whatever clip you want to uh, get to know some more about. And then we have the inspector panel, which will again be super uh, commonly used. This is where you can do a bunch of different changes and adjustments to every single clip on your timeline. So let's start with the very basics, which is making an actual cut to your clip. So once you have dragged and dropped the certain clip that you want to make a cut to onto your timeline, then all you have to do to actually make an edit in it is basically just go ahead and press B to get the blade tool, or you can also just click in here and then hover over your mouse to wherever you want to make the actual cut and then click on the video. And as you can see now, it actually split it into two separate parts. So if I want to get rid of, let's say this first part, I can just come back here to my selection tool. Now, this is another tool that you will be using all the time. Select it, as you can see, it's selected because it has this red outline, then press delete on my keyboard and now I got rid of that entire part. If I want to get rid of a space between two clips on my timeline so that there isn't this dark um, hole, then I can just go ahead and click on the actual dark space, press delete, and then I'm going to do what's called a ripple delete, right? And it will get rid of the space in between. So editing and making cuts is literally as simple as that. You just get the blade tool, which is this one and then you hover over to wherever you want to make the cut and you click on it. And then after that, you come back to the selection tool, you select the part which you want to get rid of, press delete and it's finito. Pretty cool, right? Now, another way that you can also make cuts to your clips is by actually clicking on the certain clip that you want to make an adjustment to in terms of the length of it. And you can come to the edges as well, hold onto it and then drag it to the left side to make it shorter or drag it to the right side to make it longer. And you can do this as well on actually both sides. So this is another way that you can adjust your clips length. So here we have a bunch of different adjustments for the actual timeline. So you can change how zoomed in or zoomed out your timeline is here with this little scale. Uh, you can also change the volume of your uh, timeline and clips right with this uh, slider. You can add markers to your timeline with these two. This setting right here will uh, adjust whether your audio and the video clips are linked together. So this one is called linked selection. And what you want to do is you want to turn on link selection. Let's say if you are editing a talking head video where the audio and the clip of you is together. So you don't have to separately make a bunch of different cuts. And maybe you want to turn this off if in some parts, let's say of your B-roll, you just want to you know, cut out 
the audio of your clip separately. Now, the way you import audio onto your timeline is pretty much the same. You just click the audio that you want to import, you select the part, and then you just drag and drop it onto your timeline. And then you can make cuts to it the same exact way as you would do with just a regular video layer. Now, the way that the timeline actually works is you have these separate layers and video and audio tracks, right? And the way you want to imagine it is whichever clip is on a higher track, at least from the video clips, is what gets priority in the actual final footage, right? So that's what's going to be visible at the end. So if I go ahead now and I import another clip in here and I try to put it on top maybe, well, first I'm going to make some new tracks. I will add one video and one audio track as well. So now I will have two. And then now if I go ahead and let's say drag this on top, you can see that this one gets a priority. This one is the one that's actually visible. Now you can also change the opacity of your clips to make them more or less quote unquote see through. So you can see if I select this clip right now that's on top and I come here to the video settings uh, and come here to opacity. If I adjust this, you can see I can actually change how quote unquote see through that certain clip is. So this can be used for a bunch of different things, like even making a transition or, you know, just in general, if you want to make something a little bit see-through, you can do it with this setting. But yeah, anyways, the, the point is that whichever clip is on top is what gets priority. Now, you can also lock a certain uh, video or audio track if you want with, uh, for example, this button, the lock track one, and then you won't be able to make any adjustments to it. Like you cannot accidentally delete a clip that way. And you can also disable or enable tracks. So if I want to disable this track, so none of the clips that are on that uh, video track two are actually visible in my final edit, I just click on that and I can disable it. Or if I want to enable it, I just click it again. All right, now that I have a couple of clips on my timeline, I want to show you some more basic adjustments that you will be making to your clips all the time. So the first one is going to be zooming in and out and also moving your clips on the different axes, right? So let's just select this clip, for example, and then we are going to want to come here to the inspector tab, then come here to video, and then you can see I have this transform window right here. So if I want to make my video more zoomed in or zoomed out, all I have to do is change this number right here, and you can see this way I can make the actual clip smaller, let's say, or if I want to zoom in more, I just do it the other way around. So that is basically how you can transform the clip on your timeline. You either make that number bigger or smaller as you wish, right? Now you can also change the position of your clip the same exact way, uh, but you just want to change here the position amount, right? So if you want to move it left and right, you just change the X position, make it into the minus. If you want to move it left, make it into the plus. If you want to move it right, same thing, uh, but just on the different uh, Y axes as well. If you move it to the negative, it will go down. If you move it to the positive, like let's say we put it at, you know, 225, it will go up. You can also change the rotation rotation of your clip and so on. And if you want to ever reset a parameter, you just click here on this little reset button and it's easy as that. You can also crop your clip right here from whichever angle you would want. You can also do things like stabilization or lens correction, which are some automatic settings. So there is quite a lot that you can do right here. Now, another thing that you might want to actually change is the speed of your clip and make it either faster or make it slower, right? So you can come here to speed change and you can change here whether you want it to play reverse or regular. And then you can also change the speed right here, right? So if I want to make this clip faster and make it into, you know, um, kind of like a time lapse, let's say, uh, just speed up the clip. And let's say I want to put it at a 3x speed. I'm just going to put this to 300 and you can see it made it a lot quicker uh, this way. Now, if I want to actually slow it down, I'm just going to put it, let's say at 50. So it will make it 50% of the original speed of the clip. And now you can see it's way slower. So that is how simple it is to change the speed of your clips as well. Now, if you want to 
redo any changes that you made to your edit at any given point. All you have to do is press Command plus Z or Z on your keyboard, and then you will be able to go back to the previous version of your edit. Now, if you want to redo something, you just press Shift, Command, and Z, and then you will be able to redo that undo that you did. All right, now let's talk a little bit about effects. So if you come here to the top to effects, you will be able to see that we have quite a lot of things that we can do here. We have things like video transitions, audio transitions, titles, generators, and a bunch of different other kind of effects as well. And if you use something like Envato and you got the paid version, you can add even more templates to make your workflow just way easier and way more efficient. I cannot stress this enough that it's going to help you become such a faster editor if you have the right templates and the right tools. And it will also make your edits just look way more professional off the bat. So I would highly encourage you to do that. But let's just get started, for example, with effects. So you can see here we have a bunch of these different ones. And if you want to preview any given effect, you can just go ahead and uh, kind of like hover it over your clip. You can see this, this is how this digital glitch one looks like. Or here's another one, which is the drone overlay. Uh, this looks like we, we got some sort of like military drone view. And the way you apply it is you just double click it, right? And if you want to make a change to an effect that you apply to a clip, all you have to do is come here to the inspector, come here to effects, and then you will be able to see all the different effects that you have added to your clip. Now you can see I have both the digital glitch and the drone overlay, and you can enable or disable them here by clicking on the button. Now you can make further adjustments as well to your effects. So for example, this glitch one, this is how it currently looks like, right? And then if I want to make changes to it, I can come here to the settings of it and then change, for example, the glitch width, the height, uh, the chroma scale, right? And yeah, with most effects, you can actually make customizations to it as you wish. So I would highly encourage you to go ahead, come here to the effects tab and like check out how every single one of the different effects that they have actually works. You can also add an adjustment clip on top of your other clips from here. And the cool thing about using an adjustment clip is that you can actually apply other effects and also color grades to an adjustment clip. And then that way, if you just place it on top of all your other clips that you want it to affect, you don't have to manually apply the same effects or the same color grade to every single you know, given clip under that on your timeline. You can just go ahead and drag and drop it on top of them, stretch it out so it covers all the clips that you wanted to affect, and then all of them are going to be you know, affected by it. So it's a lot easier if you have to work with a lot of clips to add the effects, let's say the color grades to adjustment clip instead of the individual clips and it will make it also easier to make changes to all of them at the same time. So that's a little pro tip for you if you want to be doing a lot of effects and color grades and so on. So these are some of the effects that they have built in here. Uh, now let's look at some of the video transitions and how you can use those. So for example, just one of the most basic transitions that everybody uses all the time is cross dissolve. So with this one, you will uh, be able to either, you know, just make your clip go from dark to bright, or even you can cross dissolve two clips together to blend in nicely and go from one clip to another uh, really smoothly. So uh, you can preview how that certain transition looks like in here as well, if you hover your mouse over it. And if you want to actually apply it to a clip, all you have to do is go on the timeline to where you want to apply it. Let's say I'm going to apply this one here in the very beginning and just drag and drop it on that clip, right? And now if I want to uh, play this back. This is how it actually looks. So you can see it goes from dark to bright uh, really nicely. And if I want to make changes to this transition, I can just click on it, come here to the inspector transition, and I can change, for example, the duration of it from one second to four seconds if I want. And then it's going to go much slower from dark to bright. So that's how you add video transitions to your clip. If you want to add uh, transition to an audio, let's say you want to fade out 
the beginning part of it. One of the easiest ways to do it is just to come here and grab this top left uh, kind of like white square and then you can drag it to the right and it will make it fade in nicely instead of being just a very harsh transition. So uh, there's that. But even if you come here to the audio transitions, you know, you can just apply any of these crossfades if you want. Now, another thing that you can do with the audio is if you want to change the volume of it, which you probably will want to do, one way you can do it is you can click on it. You can come here to the inspector audio tab and change the volume right here. Or alternatively, another way that you can do it is you can also come here and zoom in on your actual audio clip. And you can see you have this white line going all the way across the clip. And you just want to click on that and then drag it down to lower the volume or drag it up to make the volume higher. You can also make your audio tracks or video tracks bigger by dragging it here on this little uh, line. So you can customize it to fit your exact needs and liking. Next up, let's talk about how you can add some titles to your clip, because I'm sure you will want to do that at some point. So I'm just going to add another clip to my timeline. Let's say this one. And then I'm going to come here to effects and then titles right here. And you can see they have some actually pretty cool looking uh, templates that you can use, or you can also customize it for yourself. So if you scroll down, you can see like the options are, are honestly quite endless. Uh, but uh, yeah, just go ahead, preview them by hovering over it with the mouse if you want. But I'm just going to probably go with a simple text and then actually customize it. So wherever you want to add it, just drag and drop it onto a layer. And then you can also change the duration of the text and how long you want it to be by dragging it out like this. I'm happy with how long this is right now here. So if you want to change the actual text, just come here to the inspector video. And then here you will be able to change it to whatever you want. I'm going to name it frame. And then if you want to change the font, you can do it right here to whatever font you want to use. Let's just go ahead and choose a cool looking one. For example, this one, you can change the size of it as well to be as big or as small as you want. You know, you can change the tracking of it. I mean, you can adjust it to wh however you would like it to be. Obviously, you can also change the color of it and so on. Now, if you want to add effects like a drop shadow to it, you can do that here as well or add a stroke to it. You can also change the opacity of it by coming here to the settings part. And this is what I mean. Uh, for example, if I want to make it kind of like see through, I can just make it a bit lower on the opacity and then it looks like this. So the next technique I'm going to show you is called keyframing. Now, this is a really important one to learn if you want to take your editing to the next level, because with keyframing, what you can do is basically any sort of setting that has a value to it can be animated into an actual animation right? So what I mean by that is let's say you have your opacity here, right? And let's say you want to make it so that it goes from being at zero. So being completely see through to a hundred. So it becomes, you know, non see through, but I want it to happen over like a two second period, let's say. Well, what I can do is I can come here to the beginning of this clip and then I can come here to this little uh, icon here. I can press on it. And what that does is it captures a keyframe at that time on my timeline. And then I can adjust the settings uh, value to whatever I want it to be. Let's say I want it to be zero at this time. Now, after this, I'm going to go and go two seconds ahead to here. And now I'm going to go ahead and press here again. So it adds another keyframe. And now I'm going to make it into 100%, right? Or the value will be 100. And what this did is, as you can see, it actually animated it to go from zero to 100 value over this time frame that I wanted to use. Now, why is this such a cool feature? Well, because you can use this with basically any setting that has a value attached to it. So if you want to make an effect where you are, let's say, zooming in on a clip, I just take this clip for an example. You can go ahead and let's say come here to the top where it says the zoom. I can click on it right here and let's say I want it to be more zoomed in by this point. Well, I can just change the zoom value. Maybe I want it to be like 1.69 and then you can see I actually animated the zoom of this clip over the time frame that I wanted it to. So I was able to create this zooming in effect super, super easily. Now, as I said, wherever you see this little keyframe icon, you can actually do this. Now, if you want to reset it, of course, you can always just click here on the reset button and it will do it for you. 
Okay, so let's talk a little bit about coloring your footage. So to do that, you want to come here to the color tab and DaVinci Resolve actually has some super advanced coloring features. So it was the first you know, reason why a lot of people started using it. It was because of the fact that it has just so many advanced features available to create some incredible color grades. Now in this video, we're not going to go super deep into it because obviously like when you are just starting out, you don't need to be making Hollywood level of color grades. And also to be fair, I'm not the best colorist out there in the world, but I'm going to show you some of the key coloring settings that you will probably want to use. So as you can see here, we have a shit ton of different settings. Um, and yeah, there is just so many things that you can do. One of the areas or settings that you will use probably here is the color wheels. So here you can do things like changing the temperature of your clip. So if you want to make it more uh, cold, let's say you can do that adjustment right here. So you can see as I'm making this number lower, the more cooler my uh, footage becomes. And as I make it higher, the warmer it becomes. You might also want to adjust the tint to make sure that you have an accurate look on it. You can also change the contrast to make your footage more or less contrasty, the mid detail and the pivot. Now the curves is another part that you might going to use. So this is your uh, usual, you know, color curve here. Now this is just your average curve here. If you want to add a bit more contrast, a bit more punch to your clip, one really easy adjustment that you can add is an S curve. So to do that, you will just want to come here to this part where there are the shadows. You will drag it down a little bit and then you will want to add another point here and drag it up where you have the highlights. So you can see how instantly this added a lot of extra contrast to my clip. And the reason why it's called an S curve is because it kind of has this S shape, right? So that might be something that you will want to play around with if you need to add a bit more contrast to your clip or in general, the curves are great to learn. Again, in today's video, we don't have enough time to go deep into it, but it's something you will want to play around with. All right, now the fusion and the Fairlight section, again, are way more advanced features. So in this video, we'll not be covering those a lot, but let me know in the comment section down below if you want to learn more about those as well. Now, I want to show you another feature as well, which I use quite a lot, and that is the blending modes feature of the software. So for example, in here, I got this uh, piece of you know stock video from Envato, and this is basically a transition that you can apply between two clips. And you might be wondering like, well, Vince, how is this a transition? I mean, it's literally just a black clip with this burn thing happening on it. How can I use this for a transition? It doesn't make any sense. Well, what you can do with the blending modes is you can actually change how the two different layers interact with each other. So if I change the blending modes of this one, I'm just going to come here to composite. And then here where it says blending mode, I can change it to these different ones. And as you can see, as I change it, it's actually creating different kind of looks on my timeline. So the one I'm going to use for this is called lighten. And what that's going to do is it will basically get rid of the dark parts of the clip. So now if I go ahead and play it back, as you can see, I created this pretty cool looking flash ink or uh, camera burn transition. So that is another one that I love to use all the time for my edits. It's the blending modes. Now, again, you have a bunch of different blending modes and you can use each one of them differently. So if you want me to go into that deeper as well on the channel, let me know in the comment section down below, but you can also play around with them yourself and figure out what each one of them does. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use all of these different techniques that I've shown you and taught you in this video to put together a sample edit for you, where I will be putting the clips together, editing them with some music, changing the volumes, adding some sound effects, adding some effects to the clips. And I hope you are going to like it. All right, so this is what we were able to come up with. I hope you liked it. Now, once you have your masterpiece edited, the next thing that you want to do is actually export it so that you will be able to upload it to social media. So to do that, all you have to do is come here to the deliver tab, okay? And then right here, you will want to make a selection of your timeline. So you will want to make sure that you are only exporting the parts that you actually want. So to do that, what you want to do is set your in and out points. So to do that, you want to come to first of all, where you want your video to begin and then press I on your keyboard 
to set the in point and then you will want to go to where you want your clip to actually end and then press O to set the out point. And what you've done there is you've made an actual selection on your timeline. So only that part is going to be exported, right? Now, after this, you can go ahead and here select the actual format that you want to export in. I'm going to use H264. You can name your file, whatever you want. You can uh, click here on browse and choose the location of where you want to save it. I'm just going to save it on my desktop. Okay, you can set some other settings in here as well. Just double check that your resolution is good and your frame rate is good. You can also change the quality of your export to a custom setting if you want, but I'm just going to leave it on automatic for now and then click on add to render queue. After that, you can see now we have the job one here, which is this clip. Then I'm going to click on render all. And now it's actually just rendering my video from beginning to end and it's already done. So if I come to my desktop, as you can see, I have the actual exported video right here. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got some value from it. I hope you feel a little bit more confident now with getting started on your first edit. If you want to sign up for Envato, then go ahead and click the first link in the description below. And if you want to keep learning more from me and just basically learn more about video editing, DaVinci Resolve, just content creation in general and how to create content that's engaging and captures people's attention, then also you can check out my private community in the description box. And as I said, thank you for watching until the end and I will see you in the next one.